Hello everyone. Let's talk about objects. So if we are looking at a description of what objects are, and this is based on JavaScript, we can simply go to the um, Mozilla Developer Network page on it and read a description of what are objects. Um, and we can see it's just a simple definition of uh, an object is a collection of properties and a property is an association between a name or a key. You can call it a name or a key. That two uh, different terms, which are usually refer to the same thing, and a value. Um, and you could just go on and read this and see, you know, how how do you use objects? We could use this way, or we could use the uh, direct curly brace way, um, and that's all fine and good, but. The important thing is that you understand why we use objects. Um, memorizing this, the syntax of just creating an object is, is trivial. So if we go to the console, I can just say, I'm going to make a person, and it has a name, and the name is John. There, there's an object. Simple as can be. But the point is, why are we doing this in the first place? So I go over to my demo and I say, well, imagine you are um, creating some type of app and your app has information. And then we say, I want to uh, console log this information out. So what is our information? Well, it is a student's uh, John's information. And it's just one variable that contains a string. And in that string, there is uh, something that looks like a name, some numbers, something that looks like a phone number maybe. And you might think, okay, I wanna console log out this student's grade. So I um, give you that task. I say, please write the code to print out this person's grade. And this information might've come from a database or a file or user input or something. Um, that, that doesn't matter. Uh, it just, it came from somewhere and you'd say, okay, how do I print out this person's grade? And you may think about it for a while, um, ponder it, think about how you do it. Um, and then you might come back and say, uh, I don't know how to do that. And you might even go further to say, I don't think it's possible to do this. And you would be correct. You can't do this. Because given this information, I don't know what part of this is a grade. Is it the 33? Is it the three? It's probably not the 555. It's probably not the Smith part, but it could be one of these, and I have no idea. So um, this is not possible. So then how could we uh, do something different to um, be able to do this? Well, if we kind of modify the information that we were working with, we might change it to something like this. And we now have a label, which then has a colon and the value. So you can kind of see um, what this information means. The label is telling you what the information is after the colon. The last name is Smith. The grade is 33. The attendance is four. Phone number is this. Great, okay, so again, I want you to console log out this person's grade, 33. Well, how do I do that still? Um, this is just a string. If I console logged out the string, it would just console log out everything. That's not gonna work. So you may ponder it over and you may think, well, there is actually a way to do this. All I have to do is manipulate strings. So I have the string. I know where the, uh, I find out where the label grade is. I'm gonna get that index. Then I'm gonna add six to it to get the space after the colon. Then I'm gonna get the substring of that index. And then I'm gonna say, take it, um, take it from the index plus two, because in this case, the grade is two characters. And that might work. And I might say, yeah, you did it, good. But, what if the grade was three characters or one character? 
then you'd have to change this number right here. And that's besides the fact that you had to write all this code to pull it out of there, which is not ideal. We don't want to code things that we don't have to. So I might say, um, how can I make this better? How, how can I do this more easily? You might think, ponder it over, and come back and say, well, why am I putting this all together? Why don't I just put it in separate variables? That seems like an easier way. So I have John's grade is 33, attendance, etc. I might have another variable for another person. And this seems to work out because now I can say, okay, I want to console log out John's grade. Well, it's just right there in this variable. Great. I can do that. S simple. Problem solved. But what is happening here? What's the problem with this approach? Well, one, we have hard coded these variables. So that's when, whenever you code and you use variables, that's it. Whatever you coded is all there can ever be. You cannot dynamically add more variables. So what if I had John's first name? Well, I can't add that because I didn't have a variable for it. What if I had, um, well, you can see that. So besides that, uh, we might see it like a simple problem, which is we're having to relabel the, the grade or the variables every single time. Because if I just said grade, well, then suddenly I don't know whose grade it is. So I have to add this extra part of it to say, this is John's grade. Um, that's, you know, a minor thing you may think, but you know, it's code duplication. I'm having to write things over and over. So then I might, you might say, well, how can we uh, make this better? And you might recognize kind of a pattern of what we're doing here with kind of this label of John and then grade, John attendance. It's like this constant John thing and then this like attribute or property right here. Well, then we might think, hey, that kind of seems familiar. Um, I think we've seen that in objects. So um, now we have a collection of properties and that is all grouped into one variable with one label. So I'm not having to type John over and over again. This represents John and this, these properties represent all the information about John. Uh, so that we've now come to objects. The use of objects are simply to organize information in a way that's easy to work with. So we saw the progression of how it went from impossible to work with to difficult to not ideal and now to the most the best way which is with objects so uh, if we could say uh still going with our process here i want you to console log out john's grade well now i can still do that very easily because we know directly where that and piece of information is stored. Uh, we don't have to go through hoops to try and extract it out of anywhere. Okay, so now this solves the problem of the, the code duplication and uh, it solves the problem of the complications of managing and working with that information. And then it adds a little, uh, the ability to dynamically add information later. So as we said, if you once you have a variable coded, that's it. You can't dynamically have more variables or less variables when your program's running. But if you use objects, you can. You could say in some dynamic way, maybe the user is providing some information of what they want, and maybe uh, they type in a certain characteristic that they uh, want to add to a student. So maybe um, this information came from user input as the app is running. Oh, 
we can imagine these variables were not hard coded. Um, pretend they came from user input, and then we could just say middle name equals middle name value. So now we've dynamically added a piece of it, piece of information to this object during runtime because it's an object. Whereas if we had variables, we could not do that. You can't dynamically make a variable at runtime. Okay, so hope that helps a little. Uh, happy coding.